The children of Israel have now been in the wilderness for two months. And Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, that the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, with her two sons, of whom the name of one was Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for he said, The God of my father was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness, where he was encamped at the mountain of God. Now he had said to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons with her. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down and kissed him, and they asked each other about their well-being, and they went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them on the way, and how the Lord had delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the good which the Lord had done for Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be the Lord, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, and who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all the gods, for in the very thing in which they behaved proudly, he was above them. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and other sacrifices to offer to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. And so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood before Moses from morning until evening. So when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did for the people, he said, What is this thing that you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a difficulty, they come to me, and I judge between one and another, and I make known the statutes of God and his laws. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you do is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you, and you are not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people, so that you may bring the difficulties to God. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws, and show them the way in which they must walk, and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such above them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing, and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all this people will also go to their place in peace. So Moses heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens. So they judged the people at all times. The hard cases they brought to Moses, but they judged every small case themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way to his own land. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we've shared together from Exodus chapter 18. So we find that Moses' father-in-law was also a man of God. He was the priest of Midian, that is, the head of the 
tribe of Midian. Midian was also a descendant of Abraham. And evidently at this time the Midianites are still walking in the ways of God. But it will not be much later that we find them rising up against Israel and no longer walking in the ways of the Lord. And so we have a contrast between Amalek, dwellers in the wilderness who oppose Israel, that we read about in chapter 17, and fought with them, and Jethro, the priest of Midian, also dwelling in the wilderness, but supporting Moses and encouraging Moses. And Moses had a great respect for his father-in-law. It is appropriate for him to respect his father-in-law, but his father-in-law brought to him another perspective on the greatness and sovereignty of God. And of course, they were both taught the ways of God that were revealed to Abraham. In a few chapters' time, we'll read about the giving of the Ten Commandments and the Lord introducing himself. But the law that the children of Israel were living to was not just given to Moses. It had previously been given to Abraham. For the Lord had said to Abraham, I have known him, that he might teach his children. And so this teaching of the Lord had come from Abraham, both to the Midianites and to the children of Israel. And so it was that the priest of Midian was also worshipping the Lord and sacrificing to the Lord and giving thanks to the Lord and encouraging the children of Israel and rejoicing in the victory that the Lord had given them over Egypt. For in the things that Egypt boasted, the Lord had shown himself greater. Moses had not got organised in terms of having an administration to manage this large number of people. And so when people had complaints, they always came to him. When Jethro sees this, he says, you need to change this. You have a responsibility to teach the statutes of God. Do that. And you need to be the final arbiter in the difficult cases and bring matters to God to know what God's mind is on matters. But there are so many matters that others can learn from you and make the judgments. And of course, our legal system today is based on that same principle. Magistrates who deal with ordinary matters hire courts that deal with special matters. And so the instructions to Moses were, you stand before God for the people. He had a responsibility to pray for them and to represent them before God and to be God's representative to them. And you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. For we must do work and we must journey through this life, and we need guidance in that. And Moses has written that down for us. It was the responsibility the Lord called him to be the mediator. Of course, for us, the mediator is now the Lord Jesus, who is greater than Moses. However, the Lord doesn't act independently, but he appoints men to act as elders and as leaders among the people. And the character of these men is laid out. They must be able men, men of competence, men who have studied, men who are respected. They must know and understand the principles of the law that they are to administer. They must be men who fear God and never show partiality in judgment. They need to be men of truth, hating covetousness, lest they be bribed. And so Moses heeded the voice of Jethro and uh, appointed a whole hierarchy of leadership. Rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens. So that suggests that you have a, a group of five or six men making a team and that team looks after 50 people with each of them looking after about 10 people or 10 families. Many churches today are of that kind of size and are led by a body of elders. 50 to 100 people makes a nice sized church that can be cared for properly. The larger congregations become very much harder to manage unless you have a structure that breaks down into cell groups and many do it that way. So these leaders dealt with the day-to-day matters 
and moses handled the big matters.